Hey everybody, uh, so this is a bike I was working on. Oh, it's probably been a month or two, but uh, it's had a triple setup, old 9-speed uh, Shimano Altegra setup. Front rings were 52 for the big ring, 42 for the middle ring, and a 30 on the small ring there. So um, anyway, the customer just wanted to really like the frame and everything on the bike, and I uh, just wanted to do like a little makeover and so with the kind of the current technology or the current uh, parts of, that are available it's pretty it's getting difficult to uh, go back and do a lot of um, I don't know, retrofitting with these nine speed setups so what we chose to do was go with a uh, two by setup in the front and then an 11 speed in the rear uh, so this is the old uh, Octolink Shimano. Uh, the cassette was a nine-speed. It was a 1227, which I don't. Even, I don't think you can even buy this cassette anymore. You can get, you know, an 1128 or 1125, I believe, and it's just a more or less a generic, um, maybe Tiagra level, you know, or lower end or Tiagra. But uh, this is the actual um, gear combinations and everything of Sheldon Brown site. You can access this, put in your own gear ratios, and see what kind of gear inches you're getting. But basically, it looks like we had a range of 114.3 to 29.3 or something. Um, so anyways, just going to strip all the parts and things off the bike. And this particular setup, it's uh, I made a video a little while back about Octolink and Isis cranks and how to remove them. And this is actually a little section from that video, but... Uh, this is a one key release system so you don't you know, basically you just loosen the bolt it'll come loose initially and then at this point we're using it as a like a crank puller so the bolt that go engages into the spindle just stays in place and you got that little ring with the two holes on the end that's on the outside edge there it looks like a little dust cap that's kind of a, if you take that off it you can remove the bolt but essentially it's like a crank puller that's just kind of built in you can see in the middle that bolt just stays in there. Um, so anyway, we got our crank arms off. Um, we'll address this issue. This is kind of a you know a problem with those older bikes. They did have a lot of flex in the um, the brazon piece there and whatnot. But uh, anyway, we're yeah we went with the that's the old looks like the derailleur had been replaced at some point with you know a longer cage setup to work with the triple. But we're going with the the new R8000 Altegra 11 speed. Um, went with a uh, 5034 compact crank, and then in, in, you know in conjunction we did a 1134 cassette. We'll get more onto that in just a bit. Um, so got the outboard bottom bracket chain. Uh, so the cassette there it's you know say it's 1134 11 speed cassette but when you get into this sizes it's what they call the Dynasys system it'll actually fit on a 10 speed free hub body so you know you can save yourself a little bit of money if you got a good you know nice 10 speed wheel set and you're you know wondering how you're going to get by with an 11 speed you want a bigger range this is pretty pretty nice little easy shortcut you can use it on 11 speed free hub body as well with a little spacer but uh, so anyway, going to back to stripping the bits and things off the bike frame here, and uh, these old spline bottom brackets. Um, you know, I did another video a little while back where I was testing a breaker bar, and you know, folks are like, "Well, why would you ever, you know, need something with that much leverage? You know, if you if somebody didn't get it on there, and you can't just remove it with a normal wrench. It's they put it on wrong." Well. Uh, the thing I found with a lot of these older, you know, if they've been on there for 10, 15, 20, 25 years or so, they're they're difficult to remove the majority of the time. Not always, but there's some that are definitely uh, pretty tight. So the other side, it came, you know, I kind of formed a T handle there with the socket wrench and then just a adjustable wrench, and that came off fairly easy. This side was pretty. Uh, 
pretty tight so you know I tried a few different ways um, initially and you know that thing was it was on there pretty tight so this is just kind of another method use the quick release skewer to hold the tool in um, you could actually reverse this and put a uh, you know where you could slip a big one inch socket over the end piece of the tool and then use a, a big breaker bar or something I just used our big adjustable crescent wrench and then a big probably about a three four foot long section of square tubing there and just use that to torque it break it loose so sometimes you need a lot of leverage to to break these things loose there so um, that worked out pretty well uh, so yeah that's just pulling her on out here these uh, they've got a little steel plate that they would put on these old tracks kind of in between the the flange of the uh, cartridge bottom bracket there in the frame so I don't know if that you know a lot of people to really torque those in there I think a lot of times you'd get some creaking and you know a well-meaning mechanic would always think just the bottom bracket was loose and tighten it a little more and more and just weather and whatnot gets in there and that thing eventually just gets really tight so anyway just giving the bike a good wash at this point and uh, so now we're ready to put our new bits in it's the uh, outboard bearing style there and you know overall at the end of the video it gets cut a little short before I show the bike it fully completed the kind of got into a rush and then the customer once the bike was I think he was waiting there right as I was finishing it up so I never got to really do a kind of final video of riding the bike around or showing what it looked like but you know we get the majority of the pieces and things on here but you know the tools there's a few different tools you use to put these in I kind of like this one because it's an aluminum tool and you know so it you know fits nice on the aluminum cup and doesn't mar anything up uh, so yeah there's some st I've got a steel version of these just at home a Pedro's one that works really well but I don't know I like the the aluminum park ones they work really well so got the cups all threaded into the frame there and so you know this is a pretty simple installation with the uh, the hollow tech 2 system you know just basically stabs in you don't really need any special tools other than a, a, a five millimeter tool and then there's really the only special tool you need is a little splined uh, uh, tool to thread the little the little compression plug there the little preload cap or whatever it's called so um, yeah I mean the cranks will only go on here basically one way so pretty pretty idiot proof to to get these things on there you know that's the little uh, the little preload preloader cap there it's just a little plastic cap and you know it's got a little spline insert there so that's one tool that's the little park tool um, I like that it's a you know pretty nice tool but um, basically you just want to thread that thing in there hand tight till everything uh, kind of just compresses together and then from there you just uh, alternate tightening the little the pinch bolts there basically you'll want to torque them back and forth until you hit the uh, I believe it's 10 to 14 newton meters something like that you got your little safety safety clip there clip that down or 12 to 14 newton meters alternate back and forth don't tighten one down to that torque and then follow with the other one you go back and forth uh, so the derailleur we went with the, the GS it's kind of I guess a medium length cage but it will handle up to the 34 um, the 34 tooth large cassette cog there so it's kind of a you know these are a little different shape it almost looks like a one of their mountain bike derailleurs uh, but yeah we've been it's come stock on a lot of bikes now most uh, most current road bikes are actually coming with maybe this setup with the you know everything other than the super performance race bikes are coming with a uh, 1134 it seems like these days so this a common derailleur common setup on the modern bikes and whatnot got the new derailleur there which I've got to put a link to a video that I 
show how to set these up because it is a different you know if you're not used to this type of derailleur it's a pretty different process um, so uh, anyway one challenge we had was there is the little um, the pin that goes on the back to uh, kind of keeps that thing from flexing in because these these derailers do have a lot more power to them than the an older derailer uh, so I kind of made a little I don't know a little um, platform for that little stainless steel bit to to rest against there so give it some good shifting um, so or at least way more improved from the the previous setup so you can see my little spacer there and then I've got the I just epoxied that to the uh, that little stainless steel brazon that's bolted onto the frame and then I put my little plate on top of that so anyway kinda just back to the uh, we we're looking at our gear inches wise there and then with that that double you can see it's we've increased the range on the high end and the low end so we now have a broader range and something that's going to shift better as well um, you know I found this side if you're interested in even going with a lower setup or you want to move the, the range to the lower end there's several different uh, companies there that are doing like 46 30 you know the subcompact uh, gears or some you know that one's 40 24 36 20 and you know you can get them pretty pretty low there so um, anyway if you're looking at maybe increasing your range you got a triple um, hopefully you found the video interesting or helpful give you some ideas um, so anyway yeah, that's going to do it for this one uh, please consider subscribing if you're not already a subscriber and uh, thanks for watching